Are you looking to game college admissions and maybe thinking about transferring? If so, in this video, I'm gonna talk about how transferring is not only a tool you can use to game college admissions as a whole, but how you can game the system so that you have a better chance of getting in as a transfer. My name is Brooke. I've been an independent college consultant and SAT ACT coach for over a decade and a half. I've helped coach students to perfect scores on the SAT and the ACT. I've wrapped all my secrets in online courses at supertutortv.com. You can check those out. We also have tutoring and college admissions and essay coaching, which you can find at supertutortv.com slash tutoring. We're on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. Find us there. And we also have a totally free mailing list, supertutortv.com slash subscribe. And we'll keep you in the know of everything we do here, send you coupons and all that kind of fun stuff. The other thing is we ran a ton of data and I'm really excited about the blog and the chart that goes with this video. So if you want some intel on where you should be transferring based on real data, definitely check out the blog that goes with this video. You can find a link in the description. Okay, first thing that I'm gonna talk about is if you wanna game the system of transferring, find the schools where transfer rates are significantly higher than undergraduate freshman admission rates and apply there. Then you're gonna get more bang for your brain buck, so to speak, when it comes to the kind of college degree you can walk away with. So what we did is we took the data from top 50 or so ranked schools and top 10 or so ranked liberal arts institutions, and we looked at their 2020 acceptance rates, their 2020 transfer rate, we also pulled up their transfer rates from 2019 and 2018 just as a check because I know 2020 was a little bit weird because of COVID, even though that's the most recent year of data that we have. And from those data points, we've been able to assemble kind of a best bet current list of top ranked universities that you might be able to have a better chance of transferring into than you would have a chance of getting into if you had applied straight away. Okay. So if you look here and we go to the top 10 schools, usually when people come to me at first and they say, oh, Brooke, I want to transfer. And I say, oh, where do you want to transfer? Typically what comes out of their mouth is Harvard, Stanford, Princeton, Yale, right? Well, if you look at our chart, that's not really the greatest idea. Because if you look at the percent difference in transfer rate, you can see here 76% lower chances of getting in as a transfer, 70% lower, 60% lower. Isn't it already impossible to get into top colleges? Yeah, all these admission rates that are hovering around five, six, 7% in 2020 have now dropped to sub 4% at many institutions. Sub 4% people, that's pathetic and terrible and really challenging to think about. But if you look at the transfer rates, they are even more abysmal, 1.1%, 1.4% people. This is the problem. You don't have great odds of transferring at most top 10 colleges. Now, that being said, I will say one, transferring is kind of a fluke. So you can see, for example, here in 2020, Dartmouth, WOA, we had a 210% plus difference in transfer rate versus regular admission rate. You had over double the chances of getting into Dartmouth as a transfer than as a regular admit in 2020. That was weird. That was crazy. Now, that's not usually true with Dartmouth, right? Their transfer rate was 1.5% in 2018, 4% in 2019. This is not normal. So I'm attributing that to probably COVID. But in any case, there are certainly schools where it's not just a fluke. So what I've done as I parse through this data and the schools that I want to talk about for this point is I'm looking at schools where their average difference between their rate of admission in 2020, that was their normal rate of admission and their transfer rate of admission in 2020 and the differential there, I want something that's at least a 50% bump or that the average of the bump that we got in terms of the 2020 transfer rate averaged with the bump that we saw from the 2020 regular admission rate to the 2019 transfer rate that those average to at least 50% so that this isn't a fluke event. And these I've highlighted in green. So you can see Vanderbilt in 2020, we had a 217% increase and over a 96% increase, even if we're just looking at 2019 transfer rate numbers. You can see Northwestern's looking good. Barnard's looking good. USC to me has always been a solid pick. Wash U in St. Louis, University of Notre Dame, BU, Boston University, University of Virginia, UCLA, University of Michigan in Ann Arbor, UC Santa Barbara, UNC Chapel Hill. All of these universities 
are letting in significantly more people as transfers than they are as undergraduates. And those are gonna be best bets for you if you're looking for a little bit more prestige and you wanna transfer, okay? Now quickly, you might wonder why are schools raising their admission rates so much for transfers? Well, like you're trying to game the system, they're trying to game it too. And one way that they climb the rankings of US News and World Report and these other places like Forbes is that they try to reduce their freshman admission rate as much as possible, raise their bar in terms of SAT scores and GPAs and make it seem like they're really admitting an elite class. That attracts more elite candidates. More elite candidates means that they can then accept fewer of them and so on and so forth. And they can kind of climb up the rankings, right? So this is a rankings climbing strategy for colleges, but you can take advantage of that if you understand how it works, okay? All right, next up, another way that you can kind of game this transfer system is the idea of a guaranteed transfer program. Now, what is a guaranteed transfer program? Well, this is the idea that some institutions will admit you when you apply as a freshman, but will say, hey, we'd love for you to come to our university, but we want you to come as a transfer in a year and go somewhere else for a year because we don't have space on campus even though we like you, right? Again, this is a way whereby they can pad their freshman admission rate and make it really exclusive, but still fill space on campus the following year. It also allows them to kind of skirt common data set numbers in a way and push things right off. So if you have an SAT score that's outside of the boundaries of their 50th percentile and they don't want you dragging them down, they can push you into this program, right? Same with your GPA. If you're a great student, you have a great SAT score, but you got a couple bad grades and so your overall GPA is going to bring down their metrics, they might not want to admit you. This is also an open door for many alumni. USC loves its Trojan transfer program, for example, for alumni. Now, what schools do this? Georgia Tech, UT Austin, Notre Dame, Texas A&M, Cornell, U Chicago, USC, occasionally Tulane, UVA, and Boston University. And I'm not sure from year to year how often schools are exercising these kind of tactics, but it's certainly one way that you can kind of game the system and get into a school that maybe otherwise you wouldn't have gotten into given the acceptance rates, et cetera. Be aware that these guaranteed transfer spots also might be affecting some of those statistical percentiles that we showed you in the chart that I talked about with point number one. And so, you know, some of those slots for transfer students might already be earmarked for other students who applied as freshmen. So just know that going in, in any case. Next way to game the system with transferring is community colleges. Often community colleges have special relationships with other schools, particularly in their state, and they may have guaranteed admission programs to flagship institutions, for example. In California, there's plenty of these programs at many community colleges. If you join the program, you have to get a particular GPA. You may have to take particular prerequisites. But if you do that and you can get straight A's or be really on track, you can basically be guaranteed to get into, you know, a place like UC Santa Barbara, which is awesome and amazing. And finally, some colleges, even elite colleges, prefer people from community colleges. I once heard an Ivy League admission officer state that she prefers students coming from a community college than coming from another Ivy level institution because she knows she's gonna be able to change that student's life if they're amazing. Whereas if they're coming from some other Ivy, like is she really gonna move the needle on their life? No, they're gonna have a similar existence. They're just gonna be closer to their boyfriend or something, I don't know. So admissions officers are looking to move the needle for people. They're looking to find those diamonds in the rough. If you're coming from a community college and really can shine in that environment, awesome. That can actually be to your advantage. So. Don't shun community college as a stepping stone or an option if you are playing the transfer game and look for sort of guaranteed options from those community colleges and play by the rules and you can find that you have great opportunity and can save a bundle of cash, cool. Number four, my fourth tip on transferring is there's another way that you can transfer which is by doing programs that are called like three plus two programs. These are typically liberal arts plus engineering programs but there's also other kinds of programs that can be three plus two. Sometimes nursing for example, you can have a program where you go to a liberal arts college and then you get a nursing degree. Other specialized degrees might also have similar programs. What these allow you to do is take advantage again of partnerships between schools. When you have admissions plans that are through partnerships, oftentimes there's like a somewhat guaranteed admission to certain programs if you maintain a certain GPA and take certain prerequisite courses. So check into three plus two programs. Sometimes there's also things called like four plus one programs where you can get a master's degree and top off your undergraduate education with a master's from a partner university or similar university. Again, this is a way that you can kind of get a degree from a place like say Columbia or Georgia Tech 
or some other respected engineering program when maybe you went undergraduate to a small liberal arts college, whether it's highly ranked or not. And you can sort of up your game. And that's another way that you can approach this. I hope you guys like this video. So please give it a thumbs up. Tell us where you're planning to try to transfer, what your transfer game plan is in the comments below. Thanks for watching and we'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.